There in this video, I'll show you how to get started using the XAMPP data chart. And we'll just go over some basic data binding scenarios. There, there's a bit going on in this chart, though, because you'll notice that we have our X axis here that's uh, listing the dates. And then we have a Y axis here that's going off of sales price. And then another Y axis over here on the other side going against sales volume. Inside here, we have a financial data series, a candlestick data series that's going through the chart. And then we also have a spline in here. And they're, they're being shown on the same chart so you can get, kind of get an idea of how price is affected by volume. So now that you're kind of familiar with the sample, let's go on into Visual Studio and we can start working with the code. So we'll start with the lowest common denominator and work our way up. So the model that's being used in order to display data in the chart is the market data point. And just like you'd expect with any sort of financial data, we have uh, open, high, low, close, volume, date, and the item itself. So we'll use this to model the values that are being shown within the chart. And the rest of this class is just your standard I notify property change support. Uh, we've got uh, a constructor that takes all the items as parameters. Uh, we've overridden toString, and that's basically it. There's, there's not a whole lot to this model class. The random market data collection class is, is just as it sounds. It's a, a class that's used in order to generate random market data and fill up instances of the market data point class and make them available to the sample. So there's a little bit of code in this that I won't get into, but suffice it to say, you won't need to do things like this because you'll be working with real data. So that brings us to our view model. And we have the view model here, which is very simple. And all it has is a property of the random market data collection exposed as the market data property. And when we come through the first time and need an instance of the market data, we'll generate it and then return it back up to the, the view. And again, your approach will be quite a bit different because you'll be working with real data. So that brings us up to the view itself. And of course, we'll have to start off first by discussing namespaces. So within IG chart, we're bringing in infragistics.control.charts, and that will expose the XAM data chart to us. I also have the view model declared and available to, to us here. So project name.views.xamdatachart. And then now I can set the user controls resources uh, to declare an instance of the data binding view model, giving it the key of view model. So the layout route gets that as its data context, and so it's available throughout the, the rest of the control hierarchy here. So the thing that we want to begin doing is declaring a, a XAM data chart, giving it its name and some dimensions. And then the first order of business is to deal with the axes. So you can see we have an X axis, and then we have the two Y axes. So we have price and then volume. Taking a look at the X axis, it's as simple as binding to the market data itself and pulling out the date and setting that as the label. So for the label settings here, we'll set it as the outside top, set the extent to 35 to set it away from the chart a little bit, and then align the text to the bottom. So that sets up the X axis up here. Now for the Y axis, first one is price. And you can see here that we have the label settings, we're setting it outside left, and setting the extent to 55. And for volume, we have the numeric y-axis, and for its label settings, we're creating a label settings item here, setting it to the outside right this time, and setting the extent to 55 and visible. So that sets up the base of the chart and the axes needed in order to display the data correctly. So the next order of business is to deal with the data itself, and so we'll add a couple items into the series. So we have xamdatachart.series, and we have the financial price series, and then a spline series. For the financial price series, the goal of this series is to give a view of financial data in a very small, compact space. So the display type is candlestick. We're binding to the market data. And then from here, it will take a look at the item within the view model. And it's looking for the open member path. And if you remember correctly from the, the market data point class, we had the open, close, and high, and low. So we're looking to each one of those items within the, the, the data item that's coming into it. And so the path, so we have to point to each one of those properties, open, close, high, and low, and the volume member path is set to volume. And then we bind to the axes as well within the financial price series. For the spline series, we're looking at the same data within the view model, and the value member path, because this is much more simplistic, we're just going for individual values, 
we're setting that to volume and then binding it up to the axes. And so once you set up your axes and the series for the chart, you have the basics down for working with a ZAM data chart. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.